In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the shape of your basket. Here I'm going from a circle to an oval. Sometimes when I start off a basket, I have one idea and I get so far with it and I change my mind and I do something a little bit different. With this, well, I picked my center and I picked the needles that would be roughly about the same color and I used the light brown sinew to, to get my starting place. I always like to start with a wrapped row. And then I decided to change to the black sinew. I, I, I was looking at the way that this is looking and, and I thought to myself, you know what, I don't want this to be a circle basket. I want it to be an oval basket. For some reason, I'm thinking of a basket to put some bread rolls or a loaf of bread. So I'm thinking about an oval shaped basket. So I'm going to change the shape of this basket by extending it on both sides. And so I thought I'd show you how I go about that plan. I'm probably gonna go from Here's the side. I think I'll do one more tie stitch and then I'll start my wrapped row. Okay, let me show you the tie stitch again. My thread is on the far right. Far right. It, it, it went down here. That was the last place I went down. And so I'm going to go to the other, the neck. I call these posts. I'm on the right, so I go to the opposite side the left side of the post and come up through and that creates a, a diagonal stitch in between each stitch which gives it kind of a nice look on the back side of a basket you have the diagonals this one doesn't show up as good because I've got really dark thread and dark needles but this one has a little bit more contrast so you can see the diagonal lines. Okay, now that I've come up, I've come up on the left, we'll go over the top, and then we come up. I came up on the, I went down on the left, so now I go down on the opposite side. We just keep going opposites. And, and there's a reason for that, and I'll explain that in just a second. So I come up on the right, now this is the second stitch over the top. So here I come around and I do my locking stitch, which goes right between the, the coils. I do not split the coil at all. And that's my locking stitch. Because I'm going left, right, left, right, that gives stability because when you're putting together something in, in the form of a circle, there is the centrifugal force that wants to push out. And this stitch is really good. The tie stitch is really an excellent stitch for stabilizing the, the thing so things don't shift back and forth. If you don't do it right, you may have things shifting. It's gonna create straight lines or straight posts. Now I'm going to start my wrapped row. I'm gonna wrap this to about the opposite place uh, over here. And that will prepare this side for extending it. My straw is still good. So now for my wrapping, I just go under and over, under and over. And I'm gonna keep doing it until I reach the next post. See, it's not quite there yet. Try to keep it tight. Okay, it's just about there. One more. Oops. One more. Now that I am there, I will go to the left side. Comes up on the left side of the front. And then we we go over one more time and we come up this time on the right. I always like to look to make sure I'm going in the right place and I'm not splitting any coil. And this stabilizes 
that wrapped row. And this is how we start doing a wrapped row after having just came off of the tie stitch. And I'm going to continue to do that all the way over here. And then I will do, I think I'm going to do three stitches of just a regular tie and then wrap row here. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Okay, I think I've got it as far as I want to go. Let me just check it. So I'm using my tape measure to measure this part at seven inches. So I'm thinking about skipping right there. So we'll start here. And it's gonna work out. Yep, if I go right to there, perfect. So I am ready. So I'll go back to the tie stitch. Let me just add a couple more needles. I guess I should back out because I, it's really hard to do this. I wish I, there was a better way for me to see what's in the camera, especially when I'm outside. The lens thing is so dark, I, I can barely see. This is as far as I'm going to go with the wrapped row because this is the part that I'm going to extend and I'm preparing it for that extension by doing the wrapped row. So these three stitches are just going to be a regular tie stitch. So um, on the right, I go to the left. I went from the right side to the left side. Now I go over the top and I come up on the right side from the front. And this is the second time over and that's gonna be my locking stitch. So I come around, I'm coming around from the left, I go down and to the right and that's my locking stitch. I know it's upside down to you, but this will be a little easier for me to see. Okay, so I've done the one, now I need to do the next. We do our diagonal stitch. I've just come around the post. I go, from, I'm on the right. My thread is on the right, so I go in on the left. Over the top, since I came up from the left, I need to come up on the right. our locking stitch coming around the post. That's the stabilizing stitch. Okay, and this is exactly what I want for my sides. I will have two gaps or three posts. Now right here I begin my wrapping and I'm going to wrap all the way around till I get to that point right there. The same as I've done here but always have to add more needles. I cut off the cap, and this one's got two pieces. Sometimes it needs one, sometimes it'll take both, but that's pretty tight, so I think we'll just go with the one, and we begin our wrapping. With my left hand, I hold it. I do all my work with my right hand wrap. I'm letting you see the back side now, because I'm doing it kind of the opposite way for you. Now I'm at the next post, so we do the locking stitch, or well, the tie stitch. So we go down once over the top and come up on the right. And this is the second over the top. And then we do the locking stitch, which comes around that secures that and we'll just continue doing wrapped all the way till we get to right there okay i have finished up my wrapped row i did here to there and i left a gap of two spaces right here that are not wrapped because i want this to be the side and then I did a wrapped row from here to there, and I've got my two spaces on the side so that these two areas are opposite each other. And 
So I've completed uh, preparing this side and that side for my extension. Now I'm going to do two more, two more tie stitches. So on the back, I do my diagonal. I'm on the right side. So I go into the left side of the next post. Remember, I call these posts. So I go into the left side. Let me just pull up. My thread is really long because I just recently started a new thread. Go over the top. And because I came up from the left, I want to come up on the right on this side. I always like to look to make sure I'm going in the right place. Okay, as we come over the top, that's the second time around. Wrap, bring our thread underneath. And this is the thread that's going to go around the post to create that locking stitch to keep everything from slipping. And one more. slightly tangled. The nice thing about this waxed uh, sinew is it's easy to pull out the uh, tangles. Okay, this is a little bit loose, so I need to put some more needles in. I put in three, but I'm going to add one more. So insert it into my um, straw. And that makes it a little tighter, but not too tight. All right, now, right here, where I started my wrapped row last time, um, I want to, actually, I want to do one more stitch. I'm going to do one more stitch here, because this is where I want to start. So we'll do one more tie stitch. Okay, so my thread goes over the top. I came up from the left, so now I want to come up from the right. Over the top, and then around the post to make that locking stitch. And then we're going to start wrapping. I still feel like I need to add a couple more needles. So I added a couple more needles and I am ready to start wrapping. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wrap a lot and I want to be able to bring this around to this side. It's going to attach right here so it's not even going to be, it's not going to be connected here because I'm actually going to create a gap. Uh, oh, there's going to be a hole right here because I want to change the circle into an oval shape. I'm going to do this on both sides. So here I just begin wrapping. After I've done a little bit, I want to help secure it. So I'm just going to do one stitch right through the coil. right through the coil that just helps to keep the stitches um, in place so it doesn't kind of unravel because I'm going to be doing a long piece and this also gives me the opportunity to check my gauge right now it's good but probably when I do a little bit more I'm gonna to have to add some more needles so I'll just continue wrapping and see see how that um, stitch is only halfway through so I make sure this is going to cover it up you don't see that little gap. So I'm going to do a little bit more and then I'll have to check my gauge because it's going to be a long piece. Yeah, I think I need to check my gauge. 
see it's starting to feel loose now which means I need to add some more needles and so that I don't lose my stitching I so it doesn't slip on me I'm, I'm trying to keep it tight see how I'm holding the thread tight well and here I'm holding it with my thumb because I just switched hands I'm gonna take a stitch right here right in the middle of the coil and that gives it some stability so it won't unravel on me because I need to take the time to add some needles. My straw is fairly snug so I may continue with the wrapping. And this is the process that I will do. And it's, it gets to be a little awkward because I've, I've got this long extension that I'm gonna have to make it really long before I have enough to bend around to touch the side. Check my gauge. Okay, it's time to add needles. So I don't, and I'm, I'm holding my thread very tightly on the back like that, but because I need to add, add this, which means I'm gonna have to let go of this. So I want to, here I'm still holding my thread, the tension, um, but to keep my, this from unraveling, I'm gonna take a stitch right through the coil which kind of helps hold it in place, keep it stable. See, now I can drop my thread and I don't have to worry about it unraveling on me. Now, that allows me to put more needles in, which I need to keep doing. So I'm gonna keep working in that fashion until I get this long enough to go all the way around. Okay, you can see that I have uh, this long extended arm and it is about the size of the last wrapped coil but obviously I need it to be bigger because I really want to shape it kind of like this so I have to continue looks like I need to do I think that shape might be pretty decent I need to do a couple more inches of wrapped row in order to be able to have it finish up and connect right here. It is a little awkward because you're only holding on to this arm and you want to be careful with it that you don't accidentally break that arm. And one more thing, when we're doing this where we're, we're taking our needle and we're going through the coil you don't want to have a needle that's that's very large because it could break a lot of coils as you come through the coil it may break one or two so you don't want a really fat needle you want a, a, a little bit slender needle I keep various sizes of needles I have okay I have my long extended arm and I think I've got it the length that I want it, so I'm now ready to attach it. I did my little stitch through the coil to keep this from unraveling. And now I want to line up where this one ended so that that is going to be in the same place. And I'm going to do my locking stitch, uh, my tie stitch actually. So I come in on the left. And one more over the top, and we come up on the right. And now around the post to get our locking stitch to keep it stable. Comes all the way around. I want that to be tight, so I'm actually gonna come around a second time. Just so I'm going all the way around that post. There. Okay, so now this piece is attached. I'm gonna do two more tie stitches, and then I will make a long arm to go on that side. And so this is how we can reshape our basket. So I'm working on my arm and I wanted to show you another way to hold it while you are working it. Now, when I'm doing this, I, I tend to hold it like this so it's just hanging down. 
while unwrapping it. And that way I'm not putting any unnecessary strain on these and bending them. I am working with dry needles. These are untreated. I have not put them through a glycerin bath. So this is natural, uh, sort of a light brown color that they are, in, and I'm not soaking them or anything. I'm using them dry. And I do prefer to work with um, dry needles. Uh, this is why I usually have a center in the middle of my basket because I'm not making really tight curves. I am bending them here, but as you can see, it's a very big bend, so they can take that without dis destroying them. If you have some needles prepared, and what I mean by that is, you see how there are caps on the end of the needles? And usually there's about three needles per needle. You cut off the caps. I keep the caps on when I store them because I might decide to make a basket with the caps as a decorative element. But if you have enough needles cut and prepared, I'll show you another way to hold your basket to make things go just a little bit faster. So I have a stack of needles that are already um, prepared. The, the caps have been cut off. This keeps my gauge so that the coils are all the same size. This is just a straw. You can get a straw from anywhere. Chick-fil-A has really big straws. I think McDonald's has straws that are too small. These are actually um, come on the end of paintbrushes, and I have a bunch of them, different sizes, and this is kind of my favorite. It is a quarter inch gauge. So I do have this gauge measurement. It was a little tricky getting that in here for your benefit. Um, but yeah, this is, this is my favorite size right here. This um, quarter inch is about the size that I use. You can do them larger. Um, like this size would be really big. That's um, 17 64ths. This is 9 30 seconds. You could do them larger if you wanted to. All right, let me show you how to hold it if you have your needles prepared. Okay, so I'm wrapping and um, see how I've got it around my finger and I'm going to hold it tight like this and this is loose so I've got my whole hand um, I've got my needle here but you can sometimes I just drop my needle on the floor if I if I need to but I am holding the tension here so this doesn't untangle so that I can reach with my left hand and then I can grab a needle with my left hand and insert needles still need more needles so while I'm inserting my needles and checking with the left hand my right hand is still holding the tension so it doesn't come loose I don't want them to fit tight because it can tear up the straw if you put it too many in. And I've done that occasionally. Okay, so it just barely moves. All right, now, with, notice, notice these little needles that are right there. I wanna make sure I catch them. I like to bring them right up to where I'm about to, to wrap so that I catch those ends. Now I continue. I got still holding the tension and now I can continue. Sorry, camera gets in the way. It's kind of awkward because I'm reaching around the tripod and I'm kind of bent over. It's a little awkward to do this. Ouch. Okay, so that's holding it good. So that's how you can hold it when, you know, to go make things go just a little bit faster and not have to stop and do that extra little stitch. But there are times when when um, you, you need to free up your hands and that's when I would go and right through and split the coil. But for right now, I'll just continue on with what I'm doing because I just loaded my straw, but I do need to check, do a little bit. Oh, see, I'm already needing more needles. So I'm holding that tight and we'll grab another needle. I just move my needles to the left. Okay, 
I have my oval shape and you can see that these are kind of flexible like if I wanted to be more pointed I could do that or if I wanted to be more square I can do that so I have to be very careful with the next row and I want to make sure that both sides are going to be the same now when I measured this it was nine and a half inches and and when I when I got to this part when I did nine and a half inches and I brought it around I said no it's it's too short and I realized it's because we're doing a quill we're going to continuous round around 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 and so this side's going to be bigger because really it's higher up than that see that doesn't line up in this basket I'm going to do something that I well I think I'm going to do I might change my mind <laughs> but I'm gonna try to keep my coil continuously going now when I started off I made a complete circle so it looks like it starts and ends in the same place I'm gonna try to disguise my ending of one row and the starting of the next uh, coil I guess you could say each one of these is a coil or a row. Um, okay, where I'm at at this stage, I have these two gaping holes at the bottom of my basket and I don't want those holes. I'm going to fill them in with the faggot stitch. But, and I have prepared this area, this is wrapped and this is wrapped and that's very important before doing a faggoted space. We need to have wrapped rows on both sides. That's why I prepared it by covering this and that. But before I can do that faggoting stitch, I need to have some of these kind of posts along the way. So I'm gonna continue doing the tie stitch. That's these stitches right here. I'm gonna to continue to do the tie stitch around. I'm gonna go at least one more time around before I do the faggoting stitch. I don't have a, a stitch to go on, uh, around, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cut through the coil a little bit. And this is again why I don't want to use a really big needle. Um, let's talk about needles. Okay, this needle is really fat. Okay, the one that I'm using is slender. Now if I want, I can go to an even skinnier needle like this has a big hole in it I could use this that's even skinnier and maybe I'll do that I think I'll switch to a skinnier needle since I'm going to be cutting through the coil quite a bit so I usually keep different size needles sometimes when I get down to a short thread I need to go to a shorter needle so I'll switch to that or if I'm doing beads I need to have a really skinny needle that will fit through the the, the needles but if I'm not going to be cutting through any coils I will, might use this big long steel needle okay so I've switched to a more slender needle and since I don't have any stitch in there like these to go around what I'm gonna do on the back side is thinking about right about there I'm gonna go right through well I can go through that hole that's already there I'm gonna go right through the coil because I want to catch some of those stitches and that's my diagonal stitch because from here to the next okay then I can do my tie stitch so one over the top and I think I'm going to come right back through that very same hole because I don't want to make too many holes. And then we do over the top for the second and then we come around the, the post and between coil. This is the locking stitch. So I've just established a stitch. Okay, the next one I want to be about right there, but I have to check. I need to add some needles because my straw, we don't want to get the straw too loose. If the straw starts slipping and starts falling off, then you forgot to put needles in. <laughs> that happens sometimes. You get wrapped up in 
doing your stitches and you forget to check your gauge and then whoops your straw is falling off and about one more thing about holding it these this is I feed my needles from the side because that's the way I prefer to work a basket other people work the opposite direction but I figure I'm right-handed I do all of my stitching with this hand right here and I don't want to have to go around needles sticking out on this side this works better for me but let me warn you for beginners don't hold this and bend your needles like that you have to be conscious that there are needles sticking out here you can hold it here you can hold it here but don't press it down some people try to hold it so tight you have to be careful that you don't bend these needles again i'm using dry needles unprepared when i say unprepared that means i did not put them through a glycerin bath so they can break matter of fact i'm going to break a needle i'm going to show you how easily they can break see it breaks very easy i could still use that needle even though it's kind of broken i've done that before you slightly break it you stick it in there it's going to get um, worked in chances are it, it might fall off but then it might not it might get it's in there okay so now for my next stitch i want it to be right about here so I'm trying to gauge it right about here so I want to go in right there I have to do this because I'm doing a tie stitch on a wrapped row because I want to try to give some stability to my stitches and this is where I have to get this row to be attached to and I'm going to use again that same hole so I don't make any unnecessary holes in my coil and then we do our wrapped I mean our locking stitch that comes around the post from the left down on the right and I will continue to do that stitch each time going trying to line it up with the next one will be about right there lining up with this and if I feel like they're getting too far apart I might do an extra stitch in the middle because I don't want my stitches too far apart but this is going to bring this to be attached to that so that I can have some stabilizing stitches. So I'll, I will work all the way around once and then we'll come, come back to do our faggoting stitch. Okay, well I've gone twice around because I just want it to be a little bit more stable. And then uh, the next thing I'll do is show you how to fill in this gap with the faggoting stitch.